In today's competitive job market, preparing for interviews is essential, especially for positions at AMD. This video presents a curated list of the top 25 interview questions and answers that candidates may encounter during their interviews. By reviewing these questions, you'll gain insights into AMD's expectations and values. This preparation will help you articulate your skills effectively and boost your confidence when facing potential interviewers. 1. Tell me about yourself and your background in the semiconductor industry. I hold a degree in electrical engineering and have over six years of experience in the semiconductor field. My career began as a design engineer, focusing on ASIC development for consumer electronics. I later transitioned to a role in product validation, where I honed my skills in testing and performance analysis. My passion for innovation keeps me engaged with emerging technologies, and I have worked on projects involving low power designs and high performance computing. This diverse background equips me with a comprehensive understanding of the industry's challenges and opportunities, making me well prepared for a role at AMD. 2. Why are you interested in working for AMD specifically? I am particularly drawn to AMD because of its commitment to innovation and performance in the semiconductor industry. The company's focus on high-performance computing and graphics aligns with my passion for developing cutting-edge technology. AMD's emphasis on collaboration and inclusivity also resonates with me, as I believe that diverse teams produce the best results. Additionally, the recent advancements in AMD's product lineup, such as the Ryzen and EPYC processors, demonstrate the company's dedication to pushing boundaries, and I am eager to contribute to such impactful projects. 3. What do you know about AMD's current product lineup and market position? AMD has established itself as a key player in the semiconductor industry, particularly with its Ryzen CPUs and Radeon GPS. The Ryzen series offers competitive performance for both gaming and productivity, often challenging Intel in various segments. Radeon GPS, including the RX series, are known for their strong performance in gaming and professional applications. AMD's focus on high-performance computing and innovative technologies, such as chiplet architecture and 3D stacking, positions it favorably against competitors like Intel and NVIDIA. The company has made significant strides in the data center market with EPYC processors, appealing to enterprise customers needing robust, scalable solutions. 4. Can you explain the differences between CPU and GPU architectures? CPS, Central Processing Units, are designed for general-purpose processing and excel at sequential task execution, featuring a few powerful cores optimized for low-latency operations. In contrast, GPS, graphics processing units, are built for parallel processing with many smaller cores, making them ideal for handling multiple tasks simultaneously. This architecture allows GPS to perform complex calculations efficiently, such as rendering graphics or executing deep learning algorithms. The distinct designs reflect their specialized roles. CPS prioritize speed and flexibility, while GPS focus on throughput and parallelism. 5. How would you optimize code for parallel processing on AMD GPS? To optimize code for parallel processing on AMD GPS, start by analyzing the algorithm to identify parallelizable components. Utilize AMD's ROCM or OpenCL frameworks, which enable efficient GPU programming. Break down tasks into smaller kernels that can execute concurrently, maximizing the utilization of GPU cores. Employ memory coalescing techniques to reduce latency and enhance bandwidth. Use profiling tools like CodeXL or AMDU Professor to monitor performance bottlenecks, allowing for targeted optimizations. Lastly, ensure proper synchronization to avoid race conditions while maintaining high throughput. 6. Describe your experience with hardware software co-design. My experience with hardware software co-design spans several projects, where I collaborated closely with both hardware engineers and software developers. In one project, I worked on optimizing a custom FPGA implementation for a specific algorithm, ensuring that the software could effectively leverage the hardware capabilities. This involved iterative testing and refinement of both the hardware design and the software interface, leading to significant performance improvements. I also facilitated regular communication between teams to align goals and address integration challenges promptly, resulting in smoother project execution and enhanced product outcomes. 7. What challenges do you foresee for AMD in competing with Intel and NVIDIA? The semiconductor landscape is highly competitive, with Intel and NVIDIA having significant market share and established customer bases.
AMD faces challenges in maintaining technological leadership as both competitors invest heavily in R&D. Market pressures require AMD to innovate rapidly while managing costs effectively. Additionally, supply chain disruptions can hinder AMD's ability to meet demand, impacting their market position. Customer loyalty and brand recognition for Intel and NVIDIA also pose hurdles as AMD works to expand its footprint in key segments like high-performance computing and AI. 8. How do you stay updated on the latest advancements in semiconductor technology? Staying updated on the latest advancements in semiconductor technology involves a multifaceted approach. I regularly follow industry-leading journals, such as IEEE Spectrum and Semiconductor Engineering, to gain insights into emerging trends. Attending conferences and webinars, such as those hosted by SEMI or IEEE, allows me to network with professionals and learn about cutting-edge research. Additionally, I participate in online forums and subscribe to newsletters from companies like AMD and NVIDIA, ensuring I receive timely updates on product innovations and technological breakthroughs. 9. Can you walk me through the typical stages of chip design and development? The typical stages of chip design and development include several key phases. Initially, requirements are gathered to define the chip's functionality. Next, architectural design is completed to establish the overall structure and components. After that, detailed design and implementation occur, where hardware description languages, HDLs, are used to create circuit designs. Verification follows, ensuring that the design meets specifications through simulations and testing. Finally, the chip goes into fabrication, where it is manufactured, followed by post-silicon validation to confirm that it functions as intended in real-world conditions. 10. What strategies would you employ to improve power efficiency in processor design? Improving power efficiency in processor design involves multiple strategies. First, implementing dynamic voltage and frequency scaling, DVFS, allows processors to adjust power usage based on workload demands. Utilizing advanced process technologies, such as FinFETs, can reduce leakage currents. Additionally, optimizing the architecture to minimize unnecessary data movement contributes to lower power consumption. Leveraging low power design techniques, like clock gating and power gating, can further enhance efficiency. Lastly, adopting energy-aware algorithms at the software level ensures that hardware operates optimally while meeting performance requirements. 11. How would you handle a situation where there's a discrepancy between design verification results and initial specifications? When faced with a discrepancy between design verification results and initial specifications, I would first conduct a thorough analysis to determine the root cause of the issue. This involves reviewing both the verification results and the original specifications to identify any inconsistencies or misunderstandings. Collaborating with cross-functional teams, including design, verification, and project management, is crucial to gather diverse insights. Once the source of the discrepancy is identified, I would propose adjustments to either the design or specifications, ensuring all stakeholders are informed and aligned before moving forward. 12. Describe a complex technical problem you solved and the approach you took. I once encountered a significant issue in a graphics rendering engine where frame rates were dropping due to inadequate memory management. To tackle this, I first profiled the application using various tools to identify bottlenecks. Once pinpointed, I implemented a more efficient memory allocation strategy reducing fragmentation and improving cache utilization. Additionally, I optimized the rendering pipeline by batching draw calls, which minimized state changes and enhanced performance. After testing, the frame rates increased substantially, demonstrating the effectiveness of the adjustments made. 13. How do you ensure the security and integrity of chip designs? Ensuring the security and integrity of chip designs involves several layers of protection. First, I implement strict access controls and authentication for design tools and repositories. Regular audits and reviews of design files help identify vulnerabilities early. I also incorporate hardware security features, such as secure boot and encryption, to protect against unauthorized access. Collaboration with security teams during the design phase ensures that potential threats are identified and mitigated. Finally, employing formal verification methods can validate that the design adheres to specified security protocols, reducing risks significantly. 14. What experience do you have with RISCV architecture? RISCV architecture has been a significant focus in my recent projects. I have worked on developing software that leverages RISC-V's modular design, 
which allows for customization based on specific application needs. My experience includes implementing performance optimizations and writing compilers tailored for RISCV. Additionally, I contributed to a research project exploring the benefits of RISCV for low power embedded systems. This hands on experience deepened my understanding of its instruction set and ecosystem, preparing me for future challenges in the semiconductor field. 15. How would you optimize a graphics rendering pipeline for better performance on AMD GPUs? To optimize a graphics rendering pipeline for better performance on AMD GPUs, start by profiling the current pipeline to identify bottlenecks. Focus on minimizing state changes and draw calls, as these can significantly impact performance. Utilize efficient shading techniques such as deferred shading or tile-based rendering to reduce overdraw. Leverage AMD's specific features like Radeon GPU Profiler and GPU Open Resources for insights. Implement parallel processing strategies, ensuring that workloads are evenly distributed across compute units. Finally, optimize memory usage by reducing bandwidth demands and using efficient data structures. 16. Can you explain the concept of cache coherency and its importance in multi-core systems? Cache coherency refers to the consistency of data stored in local caches of a multi-core system. When multiple processors access shared data, cache coherency protocols ensure that changes made by one core are visible to others. This is crucial for maintaining data integrity and preventing stale reads, which can lead to erroneous computations. Common protocols include MESI, modified, exclusive, shared, invalid, that manage states of cache lines. Effective cache coherency mechanisms improve performance by reducing latency and ensuring that processors can work efficiently without unnecessary delays due to data inconsistencies. 17. What methodologies do you use to reduce time to market without compromising quality? To reduce time to market while ensuring quality, I employ agile methodologies, which promote iterative development and continuous feedback. This approach allows for rapid adjustments based on testing results and stakeholder input. Additionally, I emphasize cross-functional collaboration among teams, enabling parallel workflows that minimize bottlenecks. Utilizing tools like version control and automated testing helps streamline processes, ensuring that quality checks are integrated early in the development cycle. Lastly, I prioritize risk management by identifying potential issues early on and addressing them proactively. 18. How do you approach debugging performance bottlenecks in complex software systems? Debugging performance bottlenecks involves a systematic approach. First, I identify the symptoms by profiling the application to gather data on CPU and memory usage. Tools like Perf or AMD's Code XL help pinpoint hotspots. Once I've found potential bottlenecks, I analyze the algorithms and data structures used, looking for inefficiencies or unnecessary complexity. I also consider examining concurrency issues, such as thread contention, which can severely impact performance. After implementing fixes, I reprofile the system to ensure that the changes have led to the desired improvements. 19. Describe your experience with SIMD, single instruction, multiple data, instructions. SIMD instructions have played a crucial role in optimizing performance for parallel processing tasks. In my previous projects, I utilized SIMD to enhance data throughput in graphics rendering and signal processing applications. By leveraging vectorized operations, I was able to significantly reduce execution time and improve system efficiency. Familiarity with instruction sets like SSE and AVX enabled me to write optimized code that takes advantage of data level parallelism. This experience has equipped me with the skills to analyze performance bottlenecks and apply SIMD where it can yield the highest benefits. 20. How do you handle tight deadlines in high pressure situations? In high pressure situations, I prioritize effective time management and clear communication. I break down tasks into manageable parts and set clear milestones to track progress. Staying organized helps me maintain focus and avoid feeling overwhelmed. I ensure regular check-ins with team members to address any challenges promptly. When necessary, I am willing to adjust priorities and delegate tasks to ensure that critical deadlines are met. Maintaining a calm demeanor is essential, as it helps foster a productive environment, encouraging collaboration and innovative problem-solving under pressure. 21. Can you discuss the trade-offs between using a microkernel versus a monolithic kernel architecture? A microkernel architecture offers better modularity and isolation, allowing for easier updates and fault tolerance. Each component runs in user space, 
which enhances security by limiting the impact of a failure to individual components. However, this can lead to higher overhead and potentially slower performance due to the increased context switching between user and kernel space. In contrast, a monolithic kernel provides better performance due to fewer context switches and direct communication between components. However, it can be more challenging to manage, as a fault in one component can crash the entire system. Thus, the choice depends on specific application requirements and performance needs. 22. What strategies would you use to optimize code for AMD's latest processor architectures? To optimize code for AMD's latest processor architectures, I would focus on several key strategies. First, utilizing AMD's specific instruction sets, such as AVX and FMA, can enhance performance significantly. Profiling tools like AMD's Code XL help identify bottlenecks, allowing targeted optimizations. Leveraging multi-threading capabilities effectively ensures that workloads are balanced across cores. Additionally, optimizing memory access patterns to take advantage of cache hierarchies improves data throughput. Finally, I would engage in regular code reviews and refactoring to maintain efficiency as new features are added. 23. How do you approach writing secure code to prevent common vulnerabilities? To write secure code, I adopt a proactive approach by following secure coding standards and best practices. I start by conducting a thorough threat modeling process to identify potential vulnerabilities early in development. I utilize input validation techniques to ensure all user inputs are sanitized and validated before processing. Additionally, I implement proper error handling to avoid revealing sensitive information. Regular code reviews and static analysis tools help in catching security issues. Staying informed about the latest vulnerabilities in security patches is essential to maintain security throughout the software lifecycle. 24. Describe a time when you had to work closely with a cross-functional team to achieve a goal. In a previous role, I collaborated with engineering, marketing, and sales teams to launch a new product feature. Each department had different perspectives and goals, so I facilitated regular meetings to align our objectives. I created a shared project timeline and encouraged open communication. By integrating feedback from all stakeholders, we refined the feature and addressed potential market needs. This cross-functional teamwork not only enhanced the final product but also strengthened relationships between departments, fostering a culture of collaboration that benefited future projects. 25. Where do you see the future of semiconductor technology heading, and how do you think AMD can stay competitive? The future of semiconductor technology is poised for significant advancements driven by AI, machine learning, and the Internet of Things. As devices become smarter and more interconnected, the demand for high-performance, energy-efficient chips will soar. AMD can maintain its competitive edge by investing in research and development, focusing on innovative architectures, and enhancing collaboration with software developers. Emphasizing sustainability in manufacturing processes and exploring new materials could also play a crucial role in meeting future demands while addressing environmental concerns. As you prepare for your AMD interview, remember that understanding both technical and behavioral questions is key to showcasing your skills and experience. The insights shared in this video aim to equip you with the knowledge needed to excel in your interview. By practicing these questions, you can confidently present yourself as a strong candidate. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more valuable content. Good luck with your interview preparation.